All right, today we're going to talk about uh, a bullet mold I got, some bullets I'm producing since, um, like I said, <laughs> the way everything is about the only thing I can do now is cast bullets. Uh, BigLube.com is the name of the company, and Dick Dastardly is the fellow that you talk with. Um, I ordered a bullet mold from him. You know, it's a Lee style mold, the high production one, six cavity mold. And what I got was the EPP 36 mold for cap and ball Navy revolvers. Okay, it was like uh, 110 bucks and plus the shipping and that. So what I wanted was, even with all our arrows gone, bullets, um, we all know that these conical bullets, there's problems where you may have to adjust your frame or your ram is just for a round ball. So I thought maybe get something that kind of alleviates that. So if somebody doesn't want to carve out the opening in their uh, gun, be down in here, where this one, this Pieta 1851 Navy I bought, uh, it works well. I didn't have to modify it at all. Okay. So, but there are different revolvers from different time periods and different companies that won't do it. And I just wanted to try something a little bit different. So let's look at the mold and what kind of a bullet I got and a round ball and everything else and what's kind of interesting about this. Alright, here are our three bullets. In the middle is a standard Hornaday 36 caliber ball. I believe it's 370 in diameter. Here's this uh, big blue bullet mold bullet I have. If you notice, it's almost the same size as the round ball. It's got a round head and it's got this giant lube group here that what you would do is um, and it's another interesting thing about the big lube bullets. Okay, sorry about that. I put a lubricated bullet in there. And what I did was pan lube this bullet with uh, SPG bullet lube. And uh, it's a black powder lube. This company makes a lot of these bullets for cowboy action. And they, they make several different styles. And they all, the reason they call them big lube is because, say you're in cowboy action, you're firing black powder in a cartridge gun. You would want a bullet with a huge lube gr uh, groove in it to uh, put your lube in. But if you put this in like a 38 Colt case and ran it up in there, the lube isn't exposed. And we all know black powder lube is very gummy and sticky and, and, and so forth. But the idea I like about it for the cap and ball style is you don't need a wad underneath and you don't need to put grease on top. Okay, so we just dump in our charge, put this bullet in, run it down, and uh, it should be good to go. That's why I kind of was into this. Plus the fact it's round like a round ball. It's not pointed like our other conicals from historically they were like for the Colts so you won't deform the bullet I mean you go through all the trouble of getting this bullet and then when you push it down you deform this nose it kind of defeats the purpose without either having a gun set up with a loading ram for a conical bullet or modifying your loading ram for a conical bullet I was looking for something that would just fit into an average gun and like I said it's almost the same size as the round ball so this probably would work fairly good without modifying your gun. Then the other thing is with the giant lube groove, we're going to see how that works. I want to see exactly uh, how we can get away from the wonder wads and putting grease over the top. That would be a real nice thing. We lube the bullet, just drop it in, and away we go. Okay. And if you also notice our... Richmond Laboratory bullet is much larger, much heavier, and and uh, so, which is a problem with a lot of these conical bullets. They're a larger bullet. 
So let's do something. Let's weigh the three bullets and see what we're looking at. We already know we're good for size-wise, and then we'll take a look at the gun and how they fit. Okay, we're going to call out the weight. We'll start with the round ball. The round ball weighs 80 grains. Okay. The uh, big glue bullet weighs 92 grains. All right. And the Richmond Laboratory bullet weighs 148, 149, so almost 150 grains. So it's pretty big difference. So again, it's 92. Now we'll see what it weighs with a lube. Same weight. The lube really didn't add much weight to it. So we got a fairly light bullet. We're going to get um, <coughs> it running to about uh, round ball performance. So that means we can probably get 20 grains underneath this bullet. Now I had one that I uh, pressed in to the cylinder. And if you notice and look at it, these uh, bands pretty much expand out. It's a little bit off center. You know, they're a little thinner around it, but as you see, that's pretty healthy bite. In there, you know, that once you press it down into the cylinder itself, it expands these out fairly well because it is quite larger. I'll get the calipers, uh, move the camera back, and we'll take some measurements real quick. Okay, somebody brought up the question. We'll look at our cylinder. Um, you know, the difference between your bore and the cylinder. Ah. Yeah, over there. So our cylinder, a rough measurement, is 368 thousandths. Okay? So, the round ball measures 375. So that's got more than enough, you know, uh, when you go and crimp that in there, that's more than enough. And also, like I said, make sure you have chamfers on the ends of your cylinder mounts. Our little new bullet, which weighs a little more than a round ball, this thing comes in at 383 thousandths, okay? And it does have a small, let's see if we can hold it up so you can see it. It does have a small rebated rim on there, kind of, or a little. It's not large enough for um, attaching a combustible cartridge, but as you see, that little, it seats right down in there. You know, that way when you're loading it, it would drop in just like that and line it up with the cylinder, okay, which is, is fantastic. Now, when I squish that down in there, 368, or three, yeah, 360 something, that's about what I, what I got when I squeeze it in. So that three, hundred and sixty eight thousandths it forms it right to what cylinder is now a lot of people ask you know how is that going to mate up with my barrel and as you can see here in the forcing comb you know it will engage the rifling it's not sliding in there I'm not going to push this through but it does engage nicely okay now a Richmond Laboratory, which is a much heavier bullet. This bullet, I believe, this diameter here 
Yes, it's 300, like I covered, 390 thousandths. And that wide, long keel is also basically for attaching a paper cartridge, or you can just, again, drop it in to the cylinder to help align it. But being it's way oversized, it takes an awful lot of pressure to push this down. It leaves a real huge heavy ring. But the only benefit of this is that when you force that in there, it almost makes like a large... Your bearing surface in a barrel and rifling is a lot bigger with this bullet. That's why it works so well and shoots well. Okay? But then again, what I'm looking at here with this new one, even though it's lighter, those two rings on there, it's a pretty good amount to grab the rifling. So, we're going to see. And this, also this bullet, if you notice, it's much wider than this. And this is and taller when it sits in the cylinder. You know, this is where you have to modify the uh, barrel. You know, or the, yeah, the barrel to get that loading area in there. Where I don't believe you would with this one. But I only have this one gun in 36, so I can't, I don't have another one that, in other words, I don't have a 36 where this won't fit in, and I can try to see if this will, so I can't answer that question. But that's how it all looks, and that's how it's kind of going, and yes, this is a giant bullet mold, so I may be able, if I like this, I'm going to try to get out this week and test it, if I like it. I may produce some and have it for you guys to try out if you like, you guys that don't cast. Uh, and you guys that do cast, I believe he still has these in stock um, at BigLube.com. Okay. Let's put the gun together and see how it all kind of looks uh, when we load it up. Alright, and as we all know, a lot of these repro guns, depending on when it was made, by who it was made, whatever. Uh, sometimes using these uh, bullets like this, it, it's difficult. Okay. Get that out of there. Now this Pieta, and it's a fairly new one. I only bought it a few years ago. This Pieta, as you see, you can load that larger bullet in this area here okay and uh, it'll clear but the only thing was this is uh, this had to have the ram modified because the ram on this even though it fits in there the ram was concave and would smush down that point so I tried doing that uh, with it. Now, there are some people that may not feel comfortable with uh, modifying the gun or changing the RAM or, or, or working on the weapon, but would like something that functions like a round ball. So we'll put our thing on there, and as you see, because of the size of this, we get this on way here, and it still clears the frame. Where the larger bullet, you had to rotate it into the open area, and that's what a lot of these guns have a problem. This thing is almost like a round ball. See, and it's got m way more than enough room, and if you don't have a concave or uh, Colt-style ram, this is just like a round ball. And I mean, it drops in there real nice, you load it up nice, and away we go. So this would be a very good alternative if you have a pistol in the 36 caliber where this loading area and the frame and that the geometry of the gun can't handle one of these larger conical bullets like this okay this may be something for you I'm gonna go out and test this uh, I'm gonna and like I said six cavity mold I can knock these out fairly easily. I may have some for you guys, my subscribers that don't uh, cast. I'll discuss that later, but I have a lot of testing to do. Um, 
I, I like this idea and I like an alternative, uh, something a little bit different. And I think I can load this up 20 grains uh, powder. We'll see how it works. So I'll have to go do a test run. And I'm also, I went and got a custom made bullet mold that has four different style bullets into one thing and more or less got them as a sample. I have some two different designs in 45 that are similar to this. I have another 36 and I have a 31 conical bullet. Um, and what I'm trying to do is get some alternative bullets uh, because my uh, Remington um, 1858s, we all know the problem there and I'll discuss that in another video. I'm going to try to find a bullet much like this for the Remington. Uh, something similar to this. Um, this guy on Big Lube did have something, but he sold out of the 45 caliber bullet that I wanted, or I would have got it, and just ran with those two. So stay tuned, I'm, and that's what I'm kind of working on, and I may even come up with another bullet to solve a problem with another gun that I have. Okay? Stay tuned, guys.